We're going to start cutting steel this morning. Yeah, I wrote my plans all out. If you can see, I've scribed everything on here, all my lines, so that I know where my cuts are. Got my design upstairs. I'm just going to take a grinder with a cutting wheel and go through, trim these all up, and then I'm going to tack weld them together and make sure everything fits. So here's the cutouts. I got all the steel cut up. This is upside down, so I'm going to weld the bottom on here. This is going to be the firebox, two by two, along with an eight inch, if you call the flue going out to the back. And then I have a small arch at the very back of it. But right now I'm going to take that big piece after I grind these edges down a little bit, make them a little nicer. I'm going to weld that on to both of those. Starting to take shape. We got some sides on. I should say the bottoms. And right now, like I said, it's just tack welded on so that I can move it and it doesn't move too far on me. So I'm only using a 6013 weld rod on it. 75 on the welder here. So that seems to be holding it together pretty good. So I'm going to flip this thing over and start welding up on the inside as well as starting to put some bracing across the top. All right, well, that's been most of the day cutting on this thing and welding. We got the entire inside welded up, except for the front door right here. I just got done cutting this so I have to get that up and welded. We got a couple braces on the top. And I'm cutting out the, just got done cutting out the parts for the arch. And I'm going to start fabricating that and then setting it on, welding it into place. Um, as usual, I'm just going to tack weld it in first, make sure that everything works out all right. Bring my pan down here and check it out. And then if it works, we'll go from there. If not, well, then I guess I got to reevaluate and then make some adjustments. Well, I had to weld two pieces of sheet metal together to make it back for this. to completion. We got the pan on it. We got the arch on the back with the stove pipe. That gave me a little bit of trouble this morning. So now all I have to do is just finish up the firebox. Put the angle iron in there for the logs to rest on and run a couple more supports for the, the bottom of the stove and, and we should be good. This thing is about done. You got legs on it. You got all the supports in. I did forget to weld across the top, but that's no big deal. I still have one support in the firebox, and then I've got to get a door for the outside and configure up a pan. But other than that. Pretty close to being done. Getting ready for the first test boil. All leveled. Pull the pan in. First cook off, test run. It works. Second boil of sorts, second day. It's a little steamy in here, but 
You can see this is working quite well. We got the fire cranked up. We got our barrels up in the back, craning down into it. All I do for a vent is just pull out that ashtray and it cranks right up. Lots of different ways to build maple syrup evaporators. This is the route that I chose. Some guys use file cabinets, they use old tanks, they use cinder blocks, which I used for the first couple years. I decided to go this route. So I just thought I'd share my experience and hopefully that'll help some of y'all out. Uh, maybe give you an idea of what to do or what not to do. And come up with your own design. Good luck. <laughs>